اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین وصل اللہ على خیر خلقه اجمعین محمد اللہم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم وعلا آلہ الطیبین الطاہرین المعصومین المنتجبین الذین اذہب اللہ عنہم الرجس وطہرہم تطہیرا اللہم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم وعلا اصحابہم الخر المیامین واللعن الدائم على اعدائہم اجمعین من الان الى قیام یوم الدین قال الله عز وجل في كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وقضى ربك أن لا تعبد إلا إياه وبالوالدين إحسانا إما يبلغن عندك الكبر أحدهما أو كلاهما فلا تقل لهما أف ولا تنهرهما وقل لهما قولا مرحيما وخفض لهما جناح الذل من الرحمة وقل وقل رب رحمهما كما رب ياني صغير أمنا بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم respected brothers and sisters audience listeners السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته um, in the second week of our lectures or our discussions rather, they're not lectures, lectures are more better structured than this. These are just discussions on several topics. Um, it made it in a way easy for myself to prepare, but I also made it easy for those who follow, to follow, it's like you follow a different uh, series every week. So, in the second week now, we're discussing being black and Muslim. And the topic for the topics that we'll be dealing with is finding Islam tomorrow, um, the black Muslim at home, the day after that, identity crisis, the Muslim identity crisis uh, on Thursday and on Friday, inshallah, we'll be discussing no case system in islam but for today it is coming from a non-muslim family because this is significant and important to talk about because coming from a non-muslim family you have a certain background you have a certain um upbringing you have a certain environment that you grew up in a certain uh, dogma that you grew up with a certain you know there are many elements that you grew up with and Islam not being one being one of them and then you come from that family and you become a Muslim honestly I wish someone else discussed this topic uh, because uh, someone will ask why would you say talk about this I don't feel qualified to talk about this because I'm born I was born to Muslim parents, so, yeah. However, my extended family is non-Muslim. And then this is also something that we need to discuss. Because it's also it's also a dynamic that affects us as Muslims. And we'll see this, uh, inshallah, when we discuss uh, the black Muslim at home. For example, when there are weddings, there are ceremonies at home, how should this black Muslim navigate uh, in the extended family now, not the near, not the next of kin. But this is not, the purpose of this discussion is not to, to deal with sob stories uh, or to speak as black Muslims or people coming from non-Muslim families generally as victims okay sob stories and crying that no um coming from a non-muslim family these are the challenges i face yes well challenges we'll discuss them and how to solve them per perhaps but to find a way on how to be better muslims on how to benefit islam 
on one side and also ourselves and our families by being Muslim, you see. Because as I mentioned, there's, we have different upbringings, you see. Uh, you make, can make an example with where I'm stationed, where we are now, uh, in, Sil- in, in, in Silverton or in Mamilodi. The upbringing here is very different, you see. The upbringing here is very different. We can make an example with uh, alcohol, Allah. Alcohol, in our society, it's common. Uh, I heard um, someone telling, some, I heard from someone that someone told them that, look, a family member told them that, look, why are you oppressing your children? Uh, why don't you let them drink alcohol and have fun? Allah. Why are you oppressing your children like this? You see, so that coming from such a society whereby s- such vices are seen as norms and customs, when the parents inst- instill rules and certain principles upon those children to try and uh, curb that behavior, they are seen as being oppressive. The upbringing that we go through, that many of us have uh, experienced, have been raised by, it's difficult and really admirable for some to have become Muslim. You see, some parents were just people who buy them school fee, uh, who pay their school fees and buy them groceries and cook for them. Where there was no guidance, there was no, um, there was no principles instilled, there was no uh there was no management of how they should become you see they're like i know they'll figure it out on themselves so that upbringing it's and which is very common in the townships which is very common in our societies and then somebody comes from that upbringing and they become a muslim this is very admirable and should really be venerated and praised we see that in uh, certain families or dealing with siblings, you know, it becomes surprising for them that Ivan, this one maybe, uh, perhaps he had a certain childhood and then all of a sudden now he's a Muslim. And then to them also it comes as a shock and it comes as a, it comes as a shock and it comes, and it becomes surprising to them that, oh, okay, this person now is going to take up because we know the misconceptions that they have that no this is some indian culture this is some foreign thing to us as black people and then it becomes difficult to navigate that as well you see but alhamdulillah from uh, the people that i've dealt with that i that are in my circle and in the jamaat alhamdulillah their families have ex- accepted now Obviously, this becomes more difficult in a, in an issue in the case of a funeral. Then in this case, it becomes more difficult. You see that some families don't permit us. They don't let us as the Muslims to bury their, their loved one. You see. How can we go about that, inshallah? We, we will uh, discuss that in nights to come. But... Coming from that situation, coming from that lifestyle, coming from that upbringing and becoming a Muslim should really be praised, should really be venerated, should really be uh, given props. Like people like that should be saluted and they should be saluted. And, you know, because Islam, first of all, as as a concept on its own, will always be treated as strange. Muslims will always, black Muslims will always be treated as strange as well. Friday, you're going to Jum'ah, or you're, going, you're just walking around in your tishtashe. It's not Islam ground, it's just Arab dress, but we wear it on Friday. You wear it, you're walking around, and then you'll always be seen as strange. You'll always be seen as peculiar. And like, what's up with this one now? What's going on with this one now, you see? that will forever be there it will forever be there and it is upon us based on our 
um, ethics, our morals, and the way we deal with, with people to make it more familiar to them, for, to, make it, to make them understand it, understand it better. You know, uh, there's this concept in fiqh of libas shohra, meaning uh, that you dress in a way that it sets you apart from everyone. You see, this is one way that we can discuss it because assimilation to mix with the people is very important uh, to show them that, no, even though I'm Muslim, even though I pray five times a day, even though I fast in the month of Ramadan, even though I recite the Quran, even though this, this even though I don't enjoy alcohol, I don't indulge in pork, I don't do this, I don't do that, but I'm just a human like all of you. I just have a certain principles that I learn from Islam. So the example of hijab and the example of outfits, for men it's easier, they can easily mix, you know, uh, wearing whatever and then they mix with people and they become one with the people, it's easy, you see. Then, for example, I've heard many guys in the township, they say, is that guy really Muslim, man? Why doesn't he dress like you? You'll find that maybe I'm dressing a tishtash or a kurta, kukasi. Like, why doesn't he dress like you all the time? And then I'm like, no, because he's from here, he grew up here. Islam doesn't change how he dresses. It just changes how he behaves. It changes how he believes. Haven't you noticed the change in his belief? Haven't you noticed the change in his behavior, in his character? Haven't you noticed that? That's more important. For guys, this is very important. Now, with women, our sisters, uh, may Allah uh, be, uh, assist them and make it easy for them. With them, hijab is something else. Now, hijab also, as sisters, you don't necessarily need to wear abaya. You don't necessarily need to wear black every day. Yeah, of course, we we'll go for ziara because there the culture is women wear black. There, yes. But here in South Africa, you don't always have to wear black. You don't always have to wear abaya. You don't always have to wear um, to because some clothes that our sisters wear are cultural or tribal clothes for certain cult- uh, cultures, Indians, Arabs, and so on, you see. You don't always have to dress that way. As long as what needs to be covered is covered. And making the, dis- the discriminant being uh, always... Uh, what 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 I was telling a few sisters a few years ago that hijab just dress in a way that you are always ready to pray. If if adhan if the adhan goes off and you have to pray on the spot, be in an outfit that you can pray on the spot. That's it. You see, and that's common. It's easy. Yes, maybe in our age now where uh, the the new generation of ladies always want to be in tight clothes, always want to be in revealing clothes it becomes a bit difficult but for women their outfits are easy they, it, 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 it shouldn't be libasu shohra in the sense that you set yourself so much apart why do i say this because our there's one scholar who was arguing that how many especially elderly women in south africa dress actually fits hijab so you can take that style now, or okay, you dress in a certain way that doesn't have necessarily have to be a sari or abaya or whatever, but you wear in a way that, okay, is socially acceptable in South Africa that won't make you look too different, but just cover your hair, cover this, cover that, cover that, you see. This is because of the point that I mentioned that Islam will always be strange. But you don't want to now look strange and be too apart. Uh, I know with myself coming back from Iraq, I was like, nah. At the time, I didn't have clothes confession. But you just always want to be in a kurta. You always want to be in a dishdash the whole time. You know, and then you look, you are, then it becomes Lvasu Shohra. Because when you wear it on Friday, sort of in a way it's acceptable. Oh, he's going to church. He's going to the mosque to pray. Alhamdulillah. Manu, Monday, you're walking around in a kurta. Wednesday, walking around. It's, it's a bit not common in our society of South Africa. 
you see. Then slowly but surely you change to assimilate, to dress in a way that's acceptable for a man in South Africa, alhamdulillah. You don't want to do, but yes, it may be easier now because of the social media. It may be easier now because of uh, even media. It's everywhere. Islam, black Muslims are everywhere on social media, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, wherever. Twitter, every, YouTube, everywhere. There are black Muslims on all these platforms who are doing good for themselves and who are spreading the message. So it's easier now, yes. But it will always be there, that feeling that as a black Muslim, it, you are strange. You, you come from a non-Muslim family and it's, it's still strange for people coming from a non-Muslim family, coming from a st- non-Muslim society. It is still strange. Inshallah, we uh, help we, we we do our work as we say in dua kumail wajalna fiha min duati ila ta'atik and make us of those who call to your submission or allah to your obedience to your obeisance then majority of black people in south africa become uh, muslim then only then it won't be strange only then but imagine the reward that people that for me it was easy because i mean my parents were muslim me and my siblings it was easy for us who are born muslim you just follow what your parents did and then you grow with it but for someone to come from a family that the no parent none of the parents is muslim and then they become muslim imagine the reward they get i always tell people that i respect people who embrace Islam than people who were just born Muslim. Yes, of course, this is a good default to land on. This is a good default to land on and work and build on. Alhamdulillah, we thank our parents for this. Alhamdulillah, Allah. But for those who had to strive and find Islam, uh, this topic for discussion, discussion tomorrow, it is more difficult for them and it is harder for them and and the reward is proportional to the difficulty so imagine the reward that some of you brothers and sisters get it's more than the one that i get because i just got this from uh, um, mr suleiman and mrs atiyah and chinyan rahmatullahi alayha the reward is that much you see but there is something, it is a golden rule, it is universal that Islam teaches us and in Islam emphasizes it, but it is a universal rule when it comes to dealing with parents that Islam emphasizes so much that I'll close with as an advice to all of us, all of us, born Muslim, not born Muslim, in order for, to make that life easy. To make that life easy and dealing with our families easy and dealing with our societies easy. وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَن لَا تَعْبُرُ إِلَّا إِلَّا إِيَّاهِ that, And Allah has decreed that you worship none other but Him. وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانَ And be good to your parents. Yes, of course, here yeah, it's directly your biological mother, your biological father. Or your real father and your real mother. This is primary, but anyone who is at the age of your father, any elder, anyone who is peers with your parents, respect them for the sake of Islam, so that when you respect them, then they, their outlook on Islam will change. Then if their children become Muslim as well, it will be easy for them to accept because they're like, Islam changed Hussein Chinyani from the bad boy to this good boy we see, inshallah, good boy that we see today. So possibly it will change my son also to be this way. It changed, um, it changed sister so-and-so from being such a girl to being this angelic lady. So inshallah, my daughter will be like this. You see how, how we treat, how we deal with our elders, the elder, the people, the elderly people in our communities. 
that will have a huge impact on Islam. Imma yablughanna indaka al-kibar ahaduhuma aw kilahuma perhaps by blessing one of them or both of them reach old age with you fala taqul lahuma uf do not show any disrespect to them just a funny story here uh, they found someone beating his father they like why are you beating your father this is wrong he says no the quran says don't say uf so i mustn't <laughs> He says, no, the Quran says, I mustn't um, say oof to them. I mustn't scoff at my father. It doesn't say I shouldn't beat him. <laughs> it, say, it doesn't say I shouldn't beat him. But obviously the Quran here emphasizes, don't do the littlest of wrong to your parents. Don't do the little, let alone the big one. Don't do the littlest of wrong to them. And when they see... Uh, your assistants, or when they talk to you, them don't lash out at them. Always speak with mercy to your parents and elders. Obviously, this is difficult because the elders in the townships, or generally now, you greet them to melang that you want to be respectful to them, and they say eta or sure 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 bra. You know, they want to act young. وَاخْفِضْ لَهُمَا جَنَاحَ الظُّلِّ مِنَ الرَّحْمَةِ And lower yourself. Lower yourself out of mercy to them. Lower yourself. Always be merciful to them. We know the story of Imam, of a companion of Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq. He came to Medina, took the shahada, became Muslim, asked the Imam for advice. Imam, when I go home, my mom is not Muslim. What do I do? He's like, if you've been good to your mother, be even better now. A year later, she became Muslim, passed away, same day. No salah, no wudu, no nothing. Straight to Jannah. Alhamdulillah. When the Imam asked the man where the mother is, and then he gave him these glad tidings. So we must be very good to our parents, our elders, and those older than us in the community, inshallah. وَقُلْ رَبِّرْحَمْهُمَا كَمَا رَبَّانِ صَغِيرًا And say, O oh Allah, have mercy on them as they raised me when I was young. This is very important. This is very important for us to note and live by. You know, talking about the reward that those who find Islam is that hadith, the very famous hadith from the whole, ascribed to the Holy Prophet, إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَّاتِ Right? Indeed, actions are proportional to their intention. So if the intention is good, then the action will be good. فَلِكُلِّ مْرِئٍ مَا نَوَى Then, ever, so now, you should check the reason why you became Muslim or what you have gained from being Muslim. And to everyone is what they intended, that proportion. Faman Khan, this hadith was mentioned when the was narrated when the Prophet had migrated to Medina from Mecca. When he got to Medina, he said this. It is uh, not recorded that he said this. We have to be careful in the month of Ramadan when quoting the hadith. And then he says, فَمَنْ كَانَ هِجْرَتُهُ لِلَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ فَهِجْرَتُهُ لِلَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ So those who have migrated for the sake of Allah and His Messenger, then their migration is really for Allah and His Messenger. They get the best reward. But if their migration is for anything else, then they will get anything else. Their reward, they will get it from anything else. This is to speak about this thing of those who come from non-Muslim families. Why did they become Muslim? Why did they leave the comfort or that cocoon of, of their family to find something new? Why? This, then their reward 
is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and as I say it's greater than the one we get those who got it easy those who got it by, from our parents we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us appreciate the gift of Islam we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us live by Islam and die by Islam and not to take us except that we perfect our Islam inshallah we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to also help us in propagating Islam delivering the message of the Prophet of Islam to everyone and to uh, help us be examples to them when they do become Muslims inshallah tabaraka wa ta'ala to the deceased and to the ill we send the reward of Fatiha before it's Salat ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad al Fatiha Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Malik yawm al-Din Iyaka na'abudu wa Iyaka na'sta'un Ahindana al-Sarat al-Mustaqim Sarat al-Ladid An'anta alayhim Ghayr al-Maghbu